My name is Dr. David Leslie. I'm a principal investigator at TerraSearch Geophysical, as well as a principal investigator at Heritage Consultants and a research associate at the University of Connecticut. I'm here at historic Jamestown at the Pitch and Tar Swamp, where we're using vibro coring, a method of soil coring, to investigate a number of research questions. I'm standing in the marsh uh, that we just surveyed with Vibracore, as Dave mentioned. Um, and this historically has not been uh, this marshy or this swampy. This has all happened within my tenure. And we know from historic maps throughout the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th century, we even have pictures of this being a, as a cornfield. But uh, obviously you can see that this is now an encroaching swamp. This is all a function of climate change and sea level rise. We actually have issues with th this marsh in particular with drainage problems. And today it's very uh, inundated and the water is very close to the surface here. And that's just because of a high tide, uh, moon phase high tide, uh, coupled with heavy rain. We, we had rain all day yesterday and what's happening is the water's just not going anywhere. So that's sort of the, where we are in the history of the marsh. Now, the work that Dave and uh, the team at UConn, Dr. Wiemit, Will Wiemit, Dave Leslie, uh, uh, Cultural Heritage and Terra Search are doing is classic for Jamestown. This is a partnership between a nonprofit, which is Jamestown Rediscovery Preservation Virginia, and uh, University of Connecticut, and Dave Leslie, who works in uh, cultural resource management and GPR field. And so it's a, it's a great fit for us because this marsh and the for, formation of, of this is a teaching aid. So we're looking at our, our issue with the sea level rise climate change as both education, research, and a didactic for our visitors as, as we're dealing with this. So the VibraCore systems that we use here at Historic Jamestown involve a 10 foot or a longer aluminum tube that we attach a concrete mixing head to using a gas powered generator and that vibrates the core tube and reduces the friction so we can push the core into the sediment and recover long continuous sedimentation records here at, the, at Historic Jamestown. So we just collected 11 soil cores across the Pitch and Tar Swamp uh, we're going to drive these back to Connecticut tomorrow. I'll be working with a number of undergrad and graduate students at the University of Connecticut in the Geosciences Department. We'll be first opening the cores. We'll then be describing them stratigraphically. That means looking at the layers of earth within the cores. Once we've done that, we're going to start using geochemical uh, investigations such as PXRF or ICPMS. ICPMS is an inductively coupled mass spectrometer. It's just a fancy way to weigh uh, the different uh, sediments to figure out what kind of elemental composition they have so that we can really dig into some of this data. Um, we use these uh, sediments, we'll open them in the lab back at the University of Connecticut with the Geosciences Department to investigate a number of different research questions. Some of these will be what is the anthropogenic, anthropogenic impact that uh, people at Historic Jamestown had on the environment. So we'll be looking for spikes in heavy metals such as lead, arsenic, zinc that might have been associated with the blacksmithing or other uh, sort of industrial operations that happened here. But we'll also be looking for earlier uh, anthropogenic influences by pre-contact Native Americans within the area. That can include uh, charcoal lenses when people might have during the woodland era started settling into larger villages, as well as uh, any sort of uh, hints of agriculture through maize, pollen, or any number of other investigations. Some other research questions that we would be interested in is how old are the air layers of earth beneath us? So we'll use a number of different ways to do that. We can date these occupations using radiocarbon dating, if there's any charcoal or organic remains within the cores. But we can also look at spikes in uh, other heavy metals such as mercury or lead, and those are associated not only with the occupation here, possibly at historic Jamestown, but 
industrialization in the 19th century. So we know that there are large spikes in uh, mercury and lead that are associated with industrialization, as well as spikes in other uh, m minerals like lead and uranium during the nuclear age. So there's a number of ways we can use geochemical signatures and radiocarbon dating to figure out how old these layers of earth are and tie them back to both the historic Jamestown occupation and earlier occupations by Native Americans. One of the things that, th that we have to do with Jamestown, and this marsh continues to expand over here to the right of me, it's just absolutely inundated from the rain, is to mitigate that through ar the archeological process. And so we can't ignore the archeology, span the sites that were out here once. So, so the vibe recording will give us a concept of that, but over time we'll end up having to excavate around the margin of the swamp. And if we can figure out a way to at least stop it from flooding like this, hopefully we'll be able to get in here and do test units. Now, part of the research that we're doing here with the swamp is that it wasn't, it hasn't always been a swamp. And we know that, as I said, from the historic maps, but people used to live out here. And um, that's what we want to look at, right? So Dave mentioned it, but we want to look at the anthropogenic changes on the landscape. So we don't compartmentalize different parts of the property. We see it all as one big, uh, landscape that human activity has been going, uh, you know, humans have occupied this landscape for 15,000 plus years for sure. And uh, we want to study that. So part of the vibra core is to look at anthropogenic changes. In other words, how people use and change the swamp over time. So one of the other research questions that we're interested in here at Historic Jamestown is the sea level and how, how fast sea level is rising. Uh, we're going to investigate this by looking at so soil cores here within the swamp, as well as eventually doing some offshore into the James River. There we can see the layers of earth as they were originally terrestrial before they become submerged by the James River. We radiocarbon date those terrestrial layers and then create a sea level curve so that we understand how fast sea level has been rising over the last eight, seven, or 6,000 years and predict how fast sea level will rise in the future at this spot. Once Dave was done with his vibe recording, we traveled up to the University of Connecticut, and it was really interesting for me to see their life and, and what was going on with the tubes, because I didn't, I didn't really understand the process, but they literally took a, a shears and cut the tube, and they marked it first and then cut it in half, and then we pulled the wire through, and then you had two samples. One got frozen as an archive, and the second one uh, was, uh, frozen and then is going to be cleaned up and you know we can look for human activity so we already found 40 centimeters down 16 inches approximately a flake so we know you know a good ways down that people had been occupying this area which is not surprising but also um, we can look at the charcoal right so there's there's uh, eco facts in there throughout the column and that's burned uh, wood and things like that. And so you can actually carbon date those and get dates back and, and look at, again, see how that matches up for the deposition of the swamp. Now, one of the things that I, uh, you know, was really neat and I didn't quite understand is they're going to take that and divide it into, say, five centimeter increments and study each of those in the column along the way to build that stratigraphic uh, understanding of how, how this marsh was created. Uh, so very exciting to go up there, very exciting uh, collaboration here, and one that we're not to miss in terms of studying our property and being responsible to the resources at Jamestown and making sure that everyone's history is um, studied and all of our the, the use of the land over time is studied as well. So this is only the beginning of our lives in studying the, the marsh. Uh, the results of the vibe recording and uh, all that needs to be done there is in on the horizon six plus months out as many tests in archaeology are. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited. This is something that we hadn't thought about. We've always had our heads buried in the ground up on the fort side up there. And now we have an opportunity to, to take another exciting direction in the, the project. And um, so stay tuned. I think we're going to have some fun with this.